Does anybody else have busy days? Yes. Always. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Does anybody else feel like there's more day than there is you? <laughs> yes. No. Does anybody feel like there's more you than there is the day? <laughs> yes. No, no day, no me. Sometimes, and sometimes we end up feeling like there's not enough. Does anybody feel like there's not enough money, enough strength, enough rest, mm. enough time? Is it, it, I, I was feeling that way this week. And I was feeling super distracted. Um, it was hard for me to pay attention when I was trying to read my Bible. It was hard for me to focus when I was praying. It was hard for me to feel like I could get into worship. Does anybody else have those struggles or those moments? I'm, and I'm a pastor, right? Like, I'm not supposed to feel that way. Says who? Says who, exactly. And I was struggling. And I finally told the Lord. So I tend to have really honest conversations with Jesus. Because I've learned all the frou-frou, fluffy, Christianese language doesn't do any good. And so I've learned to be really honest. And I finally said, God, I, re I need you just to kind of like show up. Because I can't, I can't get to where you're at right now. I can't, I can't fill in that gap. And I need you to show up. And so I did something that maybe some of us have done during the Christmas season. I read part of the Christmas story in the Bible. And I read it. I mean, I, I grew up in the church. I said my sinner's prayer when I was five. And I've loved Jesus my whole life. And so I've heard this story. But something caught my attention this week. And I just want to read a few few verses, just a section out of the book of Matthew, Matthew's narrative, Matthew's version, Matthew's angle on the story of Jesus being born. So Matthew chapter one, starting in verse 18, it says this, this is how the birth of Jesus, the Messiah came about. His mother, Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit because Joseph her husband was faithful to the law, yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace. He was going to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are going to give him the name Jesus. So, little side note, Jesus was like the name... John is for us today. Super common. There was nothing special about the actual title name of Jesus. Because he will save his people from their sins. So it was actually the purpose of Jesus that is special. The reason that Jesus came was special. Because he came to save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Or, if you read it in Hebrew, the correct way, it means with us, God. And all of a sudden, humanity becomes the object of a sentence. With us, God. With me in the middle of my homework assignments, God. With me in the middle of finding out I don't have enough money to pay my bills, God. With me in the middle of the family tension, God. With me in the middle of my housing situation, God. With me in the middle of my broken down car, God. With me in the middle of my health struggle, God. With us, God. And I got stuck on that. Because I started thinking about how that would actually change my life if I chose to believe that. 
for being 100% real and not just a Christmas season fairy tale wish. So I'm not saying that it hasn't been real for me, but I'm saying all of a sudden, my heart wanted it to become more real than it's ever been before. You see, the difference of saying that we worship Jesus, <coughs> of saying that Jesus is the one true God, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, is he's the only God who ever came down to humanity instead of making humanity go up to him. There's all kinds of other lowercase g false gods out there that make humans go up to them, and the one true God is the only God who has chosen to come down. So there's three things about love, the love of God, that I want us to look at today. Three simple truths that I want to give you as a gift today. And the first truth is this. God's love came down. <clears throat> Philippians 2, 5 to 8 says, in your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. Who so listen to this. This is, this is who Jesus is. This is the character of Jesus. Who being in the very nature of God, did not consider equality with God something to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant being made in human likeness. And being found in the appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. You see, God's heart embodied in Jesus is to come down and to be low. To come to where we're at. Right where we're at. So here's what that tells me. In the middle of my mess, in the middle of my unfinished business, in the middle of my not knowing what the answer is, in the middle of my brokenness, in the middle of my trying my best and not quite getting it, in the middle of really did I do that again, is Jesus. You see, if we were to understand what Bethlehem was like during a census time, it would be Las Vegas on New Year's Eve. It was loud, it was crowded, it was full of people who were only there to get what they wanted to get. And yet Jesus picked that place to come. So that tells me Jesus would pick out Atlanta. <laughs> Jesus would even pick your dinner table on the night when you don't want anybody to come by and ring your doorbell because things are just chaos, madness, and it's been a bad day. <laughs> Jesus comes to the place that nobody else wants to be at because that's who he is. He comes down. And he meets us where we're at. That's his character. So I don't know about you, I kind of like hanging out with people that I don't have to pretend around, right? I kind of like hanging out with people that I, it's okay if I've got two different shoes on because I ran out of the house so fast that day. <laughs> That's actually happened to me before. <laughs> Especially in my early single mom years when my kids were little. You know, one day I took my kids to school and I dropped them off. It had been a hard morning. We, and, and, and I, like, you know, kind of like doing the, like, push them out of the van in front of the school while the van's still rolling. <laughs> and, uh, and I had to always pass my house on the way back to go to my job. And um, so I was like, okay, I'm going to drive past my house just because that's the way I usually went. So I'm driving past my house, and then I, like, like I'm, like, looking, and I, like, screech on the brake. Back up because there's a backpack in the front yard, the front door is wide open, and there was a shoe in the doorway. And I, <laughs> <laughs> so I got a kid at school without a backpack, a kid at school without <coughs> one of their shoes. <laughs> and thankfully, no one wandered into my house while we were gone for those few minutes. I mean, it was just that kind of day, right? Jesus is right there in those kind of days for us. That's where he meets us. He comes down to where we're at. Amen. That's what God's love looks like. Mm. So can we take a breath in that? Like, <sighs> Thank you. Ooh, it kind of 
takes some of the pressure off, right? Right? That we don't have to perform. We don't have to have it all together. Here's another thing about God's love. God's love took our place. God's love stands in the gap. Amen. Romans 5, 5 to 8 says this. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. You see, at just the right time, not too early and not too late, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person. Though for a good person, maybe, maybe someone might possibly dare, dare to die. But God demonstrates. Listen to this. This is not a past tense word. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. God's love took your place. You see, that was the plan all along. God's expectation was that you wouldn't measure up, that I would not measure up, that there would be a gap, and someone would have to stand in that gap for us. So when Jesus came and was in that manger or that feeding trough, and some scholars say that it was more of a cave environment. It wasn't even a wooden constructed shelter, that it was more of a cave because that's how they housed their animals in those days. That in that moment, as a baby, the purpose of Jesus was still that he was going to fill in the gap for us. That in the most vulnerable, feeble state, that who he was would end up being enough for the worst of who we are. You know that thing that you don't want anybody to ever know about? He knows. Jesus is the gap filler for that thing. That time in your life when you just, maybe it's right now, when you just keep coming up short, and man, you just, you're about ready to not want to wake up tomorrow because you just know that you're going to come up short again, right? Yeah. Jesus is the gap filler. Jesus is the one that gets us from where we're at to where God is. You see, love took, took our place. Love takes our place. It says God demonstrates. So here's what that tells me. It was not just a one-time demonstration of love, but that God's love is ongoing. It's everlasting. It's never ending. It's abounding. It's overflowing. That's God's love for us. It's not like human love. Right? Our human love, what? Has limits? Mm -hmm. Falls short? Conditional. Is conditional? Is shallow? God's love. <clears throat> Listen. Your love, O Lord. Reaches to the heavens, your love, O oh Lord, deeper than the seas. Your love, O oh Lord, is higher than the mountains. I love the hymn that if the whole oceans of all the world were filled with ink and the sky would be a scroll, there would still not be enough space for the love of God to be written. You are loved by God today. You are loved by God. And it is an unending, overflowing, never-ending source of love. Everlasting love. Perfect love that fills in our gap. That takes our place. That when we meet him, when we have an encounter with him, and every single one of us, there is a moment where we encounter God's love. And in that moment is where we realize, yeah, we need it. 
because we can't we can't measure up. We can't we can't cross that line on our own. We can't do enough, be enough, go enough, make it happen enough. We need his love to fill in that gap. His love came down, his love took our place, and his love shows us the way. God's love shows us the way. First John says this, everyone who believes that Jesus Christ is born of God and everyone who loves the Father loves his child as well. This is how we know we love the children of God, by loving God and carrying out his commands. In fact, this is love for God, to keep his commands. And his commands are not burdensome. For everyone born of God overcomes the world. Here, here's the key to understanding that. We're not talking about religion. We're not talking about ritual. We're not talking about a checklist. We're not talking about performance. Because we've already admitted that we don't have what it takes. Here's what it says when everybody who is born of God loves God and keeps his commands and that it's not burdensome. It means that first you have received the love of God, and that is what you live out of. Because how do you know living out of the love of God means what you're going to love the way God loves? Yeah. It's not something that we're trying to attain or get to or achieve. It's something that fills us up that we live out of. We love because what he first loved us. God is an initiator. God is a first responder. How many of you have had God be a first responder in your love? Okay. He's the one that shows up on the scene of the crime. And Jesus did the time. I'm about to become a poet like Miss Bubbles, Miss Bubbles, right? God is a first responder. He initiates. His love is not burdensome because when you encounter his love and you choose to receive his love, that becomes what you live out of. And that is how we follow his commands. He begins to change our hearts. He begins to change our minds. We become more like him so that then we live like him and we share his love with others. For everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Who is that? Who is it that overcomes the world? Only the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. This is not a message of power revolution. This is a message of love revolution. God's power is a backwards, upside down power. Yeah. It's not about reigning over, lording over, it's about being under and serving under. Just the same way, right? The example, love came down. His love shows us the way. Here's what this looks like in real practical terms. This is the message, the message version of the Bible. 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 13, 4 to 8, the definition of love. Listen to this. Soak, soak this in. Love never gives up. Jesus never gives up. Love cares more for others than for self. Love doesn't want what it doesn't have. Love doesn't strut. Doesn't have a swelled head. Love doesn't force itself on others. Love is not always me first. Love doesn't fly off the handle. Love doesn't keep score of the sins of others. <clears throat> love doesn't revel when others grovel. Love takes pleasure in the flowering of truth. Love puts up with anything. Love trusts God always. Love always looks for the best. Love never looks back. But it keeps on going to the end. Love never dies. God's love came down. God's love took our place. 
And God's love shows us the way. The way of love. So let me ask you this. In a moment, we're going to play a worship song. And as the song is playing, I'll be down front. If you want prayer, I'm going to be happy to pray with you. But if there's something that you want to talk to God about, maybe, maybe the part about love doesn't fly off the handle. Maybe that's something you need to talk to God about. Maybe the part about keeping score. Maybe the part about putting up with anything. Ooh, that's hard. Maybe the part about not looking back. How many of us need to stop looking backwards? Okay. Yeah? But as you do that, as you're responding to what God is saying to you, do it with this truth. God loves you. God's going to love you the same right now as he does right now. As he does right now, because right now is a different moment than right now. <laughs> Amen. Amen. God loves you. There's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> he just does. And maybe, maybe while the song is playing, maybe you just need to receive that. Maybe today, part of your Christmas present is receiving God's love. I want to say this. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter where you've been. It doesn't matter what your parents did. It doesn't matter what you thought you were going to do tomorrow. God loves you so much that he sent Jesus to live and then die in your place so that you could be in relationship with God. It, that's the gospel message. So let's, let's play that song. And uh, if you want prayer, I'll be up here. Um, Alyssa will be up here. Pastor Nate will come up. We'll, we're happy to pray with you for anything, big or small. If you want to just sit in your seat and talk to God, you can do that. But just listen, or just listen to the words and just receive God's love. <laughs>